David Lammy, thanks for taking the time to join us. Not at all, great. Who'd have thought it that Boris Johnson would be the person to unite the Labour Party conference? <laughs> we've, gone, we've gone from wars about Tom Watson, Jeremy Corbyn, Brexit policy, and then we wake up this morning and the Supreme Court has ruled unanimously against Boris Johnson's prorogation of Parliament. Talk us through it. It's huge. This is 11 of our most senior judges unanimously concluding that he lied to the Queen that his intention was to stop Parliament scrutinising what he was up to with heading towards a no-deal Brexit, that he shut the doors and that basically that was unlawful. Um, we should now reopen those doors, of course, and let parliamentarians back in to do their job of scrutinising this government. But he should go. He should resign. This is a monumental cluster muck. It should never have happened. It's outrageous. You know, people have fought for years to get a sovereign parliament where you can hold the executive to account. And to try and shut that down is the behaviour of a dictator. And he should resign and go on that basis. Do you think he'll resign? I don't think he will. And I think that he is, um, you know, totally without any kind of moral code and integrity um, and so I think he'll try and bludgeon through but he is badly badly wounded I think people can see this for what what it is and it's basically men who are prepared to act criminally in order to thwart our democracy and I would say to anyone viewing this get engaged get plugged in and fight this nonsense, fight it, because actually this is your future there, they're not denying. Do you think people are going to buy that? Because there's a lot of talk, we all, we've all heard the arguments, taking back control, British laws, British Parliament. The last time senior judges in the country acted in a way on Brexit that was viewed as not supporting of it, you know, there was outcry, enemies of the people, we heard it before. Already we're seeing leave.eu and the likes targeting the justices who made this decision. Do you think people on the Brexit side of the argument will see Boris Johnson lying to the Queen and accept that? Or do you think it's only going to entrench people further into their positions? I think that there are sane, decent people who voted leave, some who now regret that decision. I think there are people who maintain that position, but that does not mean they support doing unconstitutional things and lying to a 94-year-old woman who served this country for so many years well. Um, so of course this is a moment where the world and people watching on TV today will stop and pause and question where we are heading. So you'll be back in Parliament tomorrow, presumably? I intend to be back in Parliament tomorrow doing my job and holding this government to account. So let's talk about Labour conference more broadly. Um, an abortive attempt by John Landsman to depose Tom Watson earlier today. Has this conference been a united one for you? Look, I think we went into conference in a very bad place. Um, our political opponents are tearing apart this country, are determined for us to head towards a no-deal Brexit, which would cost jobs, um, end free movement and young people's ability to travel across Europe and find jobs, uh, I think would trash our country as we know it. That is our political opponent. And to start the conference with internecine tribal politics, I think was deeply unattractive to the vast majority of the electorate. Any Conference season is an opportunity for people to look in on party politics, because you're not living party politics day to day like you and I are, to look in, to get a sense of where the party's at, what they stand for. We had some bold policies um, to announce, um, for example, <laughs> um, abolishing private schools, a pretty big political announcement. All of that eclipsed by infighting, basically, going on in the Labour Party. I'm glad that it was put to one side, but I said at the time, let's fight Boris, not bloody Tom Watson. Do you support the abolishing of private schools then? 
I certainly think that two aspects of that policy, the decision to take away charitable status, which I've called for in the past, and the decision to cap university entrance into the Russell Group at 7% is sound um, and absolutely where we should be heading. Sort of a consequence of this, though, let's say if we abolish private schools, what happens to the best comps in the country? The property prices around them, aren't we just going to see people who could spend the money on a private education buying property in the catchment areas of the good schools and thereby taking those places instead of the ones that private schools? Yeah, I think that's true. You know, it is still the case that you can move into um, a leafy, uh, well-off area and access a really good state school and you still paid for it because you paid for it by buying mm -hmm. an expensive house. Um, nevertheless, you know, I have been raising now a huge injustice in relation to entry to Oxford and Cambridge that it is absolutely the case that if you can tutor your child, send your child to a private school, uh, it might not be bright actually, or certainly not more bright than someone in the tower block who's, who's equally as intelligent capable of going, your chances are much higher. That is unfair and we've got to stop tinkering around with this sort of social mobility little bits here and there, and basically plucking a few uh, poor kids to be part of the middle class and actually look far more profoundly at the biggest obstacle to progress. And the biggest obstacle to progress is the inherent unfairness of a private school and public school system that basically corners the best jobs and the best opportunities. And if you're serious about dealing with equality and inequality, that issue has to be addressed and the Labour Party is doing it. Now, is this the whole story? I don't think it can be. Um, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not quite sure about requisitioning uh, schools and all the rest of it. But the thrust of the direction in which we're going, I think, I think is bold. And in politics, I've learned, you've got to start the argument there to end up there, actually. Um, and so there's a long way to play out between actually announcing a policy and then being able to implement the policy. A long, long way to get to. So I think it was, it was one of those bold steps. The other big talking point of the conference has been the party's Brexit policy. I don't think it's necessarily one that you personally would like to see. You'd like to see the Labour Party in a much more full-throated Remain position. But could you explain what Labour's position is at the moment? <laughs> Thanks a lot. I mean, look, I've campaigned hard to get a people's vote, a final say referendum to allow the British people to check in again. Do you want whatever deal emerges or do you want to remain? And finally, the Labour Party is united on that and I'm pleased about that. Of course, I've been campaigning for it uh, for the last three and a half years. Um, however, my position is I will absolutely campaign for us to remain within the European Union. And that is because the best deal for my constituents uh, for the country, for millions of people across this country, is the deal we have. And that is the deal within the European Union. Now, it's not a European Union where we won't be pressing for aspects of reform. Of course we will want a reformed European Union, but it's the best deal. And I don't think there is any deal that Jeremy Corbyn could strike that is better than the deal we have, and therefore I will be campaigning for Remain. The party's position is that uh, Jeremy hopes to win the next general election, go out and strike a deal. And obviously, he doesn't want to go into those negotiations with his hands tied and say, whatever deal I strike, I've got to campaign um, for Remain. So that's the position, but I'm really clear where I stand. I think that's the mood, actually, of the majority of um, members in the... Um, Labour Party, it wasn't the mood of the unions and it wasn't the mood on the conference floor, but that is by no means the entirety of the Labour Party. So these issues, we've spoken about Brexit, we've spoken about education, they probably they affect young people, they're, they're issues for young people. What can people do? How can they engage? What can they, what can they do to stop someone like Boris Johnson, who a lot of young people really actually don't like very much? How can they stop him from staying in power? We're having this, con this conversation on a huge constitutional moment in this country where the judges have played their part and acted. 
And I would say to any young voter, play your part, do your bit. And the starting point for doing your bit is voting. So register and treasure that register. And when the moment comes, act and vote and vote against this nonsense. Vote against something that's going to strip your interests, make you poorer, mean you can't buy a house, mean you can't get the job you want, mean you can't love someone in, an, in, a, in another part of Europe and move there. Vote against it, kill it, knock it dead. And you do that by voting. But of course, march, campaign, be involved, be engaged. This is your life that they're trying to rob from you. David Lamming, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you.